pretty cool tungsten actual all right here we go boys hang on all right yeah he does got the jams got the jams i do like the jams pump up brian likes to funk out before we get started so. i do like to get a little funky with our jams it's okay I like nothing them. wrong with that so Welcome back, everyone. Uh, it feels good to be back at full strength. We have Gosh, the dynamic duo back together. I'm so happy to uh, to be back <laughs> with you, Matt. That's, yeah, that's rough being home. It's it's no fun. So, uh, welcome everyone to live fly tying. This is I don't even know what episode we're on, but we have a guest we're all very excited to have here. So, uh, uh, we got Russ Madden tonight. Brian. We have Russ. Just pretty Stream exciting. Mad. So please, uh, of <laughs> course, as usual, let us know that you can actually hear us. Um, I make sure everything's connected as usual, but should be good to go. Uh, let's uh, let's introduce Russ. Why don't you introduce Brian? All right. Well, gosh, Russ has been around the area forever, and uh, we used to be roommates. We've had a lot of wonderful times together. <laughs> Did a lot of fishing, uh, a lot of ice fishing back in the day when we were in Detroit. A lot of steelhead fishing, streamer fishing, whatever. Yeah, a lot was, of mouse. Remember that ice fishing day? That was, uh, that was pretty legendary. <laughs> that was listed in my first divorce. Yeah, that, that one. <laughs> when the police were there. Yeah, when, they, when we were missing. Yeah, we, we were missing. Thinking. We were probably fishing. I think he was like the CFO of Ford. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Russ is one of the most innovative fly tires um, really in the country, um, his streamers are definitely second to none and he's kind of set the standard for many of the trout streamers and, you know, any p sort of predator fish. And we're super happy to have him here tonight. Right on. Thanks, Brian. Absolutely. Wait, wait, we're we going to talk about, I think we were going to talk, uh, what were we talking about? Ice fishing? I we, think we, was we, the, we did, we you were setting stuff up. I know. I had to or? fix Russ's focus. Here's out of focus. Out now of we can focus. all see him. I think so. Holding. Right. Yeah. We were talking about when you know Russ and I used to ice fish, and, and w the one particular time when it was listed in my first divorce. Oh, that's yeah. right. You missed it. You were so. I, I know. I was playing with the focus. So <laughs> <laughs> we went oh. missing. We, we went on a missing. private lake. I think and surrounded we were, by mansions. And we were gone for like 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we barely got our holes dug. It was well worth the fist fight, wasn't it? <laughs> I guess so. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Russ, where are we tying tonight? Well, we're doing a pattern. I kind of got some requests for some old school patterns and actually had to go into my basement to dig out some bunny because I haven't used it in so long. I figured I'd blow the dust off it and... Come, came up with a pattern of probably a 99 or 98 that I used for a chestnut lamprey mm -hmm. in the spring. And it's a single hook fly. Um, pretty easy to tie, but pretty effective for a lot of different species. I use it as a chestnut lamprey, but you can use it as an attractor or basically anything that a bunny, you know, bunny fly would work for, bass, pike. Um, also do a, a feather version too. So it's called the Southbound Trucker. I'm going to run it on. Today we're doing a one at uh, just for you guys out there, but it can go all the way down to a two. Um, you can use lead if you want. You can use this with a cone. You can do chains. You can do lead wrap. Uh, any way you want to make your weighting system, you can definitely modify this pattern. There's many different things you can do with this. It's a, a really good platform fly, and that's kind of what I've been known for is just doing good platforms. And guide flies, you know, stuff that I would come home at night and not have a million hours into it and be able to go out and catch some fish on it for my customer the next day. So this is an easy one and pretty pretty good pattern for, for a chestnut. Still use it. I use a little bit more of the feather versions nowadays, but that's just because it's a little lighter and my guys cast it a little better. We had a question here, Ross, on uh, what time of year do you fish those chestnut lampreys? Spring. So. springtime like I, I would say around here would be may but every winter is a little different sometimes you'll have hardly any snow and warm temps all the way through april and they'll happen a little earlier but it's kind of in between that you know when you have those smolts going on that pm you know any migratory fish river you'll have the chestnuts going on the upper rivers where there isn't access to you know yep. 
And that's the their lamp. main spawning time, and that's yeah, the chestnuts around. spawn in the spring. Same with the the sea lamprey. So they basically yeah. all spawn the same time. So if you start seeing that water in that forty six ish range, I'd probably start thinking about getting on some chestnuts. Fantastic. Um, and then where did you come up with the name Southbound Trucker? Actually, it was in a song. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety-seven okay, for the song out. So Everyone missed it. The- I mean, because we had this muted, you know, during the intro. But there was some singing going on. Mm-hmm. There was some some improv. I and like to do a little improv to our opening music. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe sometime I'll get a video of that for everyone. <laughs> Maybe you should. <laughs> Maybe you should. All right. So we're gonna start off here uh, to do the southbound. We're gonna get some thread, and I usually when I'm doing. This fly in particular, it's a single hook fly. What I'll do is first is I'll kind of lay my eye out there and get a rough estimate. These are just small lead eyes, but like I said, you can use chains or whatever. And by laying that eye out there, it kind of gives me just a point of reference on how far back I want to put it. So what I'll do is I'll just coat that thread and just get a base layer on there using these small bobbins now from Dr. Slick because they're easier on my hand. Is that the the uh your favorite vivas 60 yeah this White. is the vivas 6 out i use that like religion i think i order that by the dozen yeah for i order us, lots usually, of it so. i like running it it's it's pretty good i i that's pretty much all i tie with honestly unless i'm really cranking on hair which i rarely do nowadays i just think there's easier ways to spend my time than you know time flies most of these things are when i'm tying these flies are weaponry they're strictly business you know, I'm not just saying arts and crafts here, people. <laughs> oh, so all right. Who had, Who had money? Who had money on 12 minutes? Money on 12 minutes for for us. when he would say not it. Not so. just arts and crafts. <laughs> well, I got to start that off at every single time I come to a vice in front of a camera Absolutely. because I got to emphasize that, and it's it's such an important part of of fly fishing in general to me uh, and to many other people too the, most of the innovators are actual pretty dang good fishermen when a rubber hits the road pretty hard to find a great innovator fly tire that's sitting in an apartment in downtown chicago let's say so anyway good little trick to tie these eyes in you can do that basic figure eight and again i'm putting them on the bottom because it's a you know reverse jig it's not gonna hook his riding down i'm gonna go around like that i'm gonna go around each eye and I'll go around the base, go back to the figure eight, and that's usually a good way to secure it. And notice how I got the eyes in there strictly for point of reference. Going to tell me where to end my fly. And those are on the bottom? On the bottom. Not saying you can't go at home and put a cone on the front or put chains on it and invert it. I'm going to go back to the back of that hook. And a major importance to having your fly actually function when you're doing a bunny fly is having some form of support off the back. And if you don't put something to support their bunny, support your material off the back, you're going to end up with that thing around that hook a lot, especially if you've got an aberrant caster in your boat. And, you know, you're forcing that cast or whatever. A lot of these rivers up here are tiny, and you're going to have to master that force cast or get that roll cast or whatever you got to do to get it out there. And a lot of times somebody from Wichita, Kansas, can't always cast that good. So you're gonna end up with that thing around that hook. So by putting some material like a stiffening agent, I call it, just buck hair or something stiff off the back, it's gonna prevent fouling. You'll see it in tarpon flies. You could put a mono loop back there, et cetera, et cetera. It's just what I'm gonna do here for this fly that I always have done. Take a little chunk of buck. How long have you been tying the south down trucker, Russ? <sighs> It'd be at least since 97, probably a little earlier. Which, hey, Russ, real quick, which part of the buck, uh, bucktail are you cutting from? There, I'm just, just going right reference. into the middle where I approximate that there's a reasonable length of bucktail and where it's not too hollow, you know, because I kind of want this somewhat tight so I wouldn't be grabbing the bottom of it because it's pretty flary. I know so, we've talked in the past about, you know, you right, used right to, up into here I've seen where, you break bucktails yeah, right off and I half break this and just bottom part off and, a lot because it's hollow. And you can give this to Willen or some musky dude, but I'm not doing that. (laughs) I'm going right here. I'm using only this stuff. Tips where you're going to get your choice. But I I was right up in here when I hacked it. Okay. I'm going to lay this on here. Remember, all this this work up here is going to be covered up. So you, you can pretty much get away with murder on this thing. 
It's like the late night, got to tie the olive thing for the next morning type fly. This is a really important part. Everybody should pay attention to how he's securing, not yeah, just wrapped down on top. Yeah, this is but a he's great pulling trick a few. Here, as Matt said, when you're when you do the buck hair, you can take a little bit of lift and wedge that thing in there. This makes and, such a big and difference. Kind of put a lock in there, and what that'll do is it'll get this thing good and secure, so your buddy doesn't see the fly on your dashboard and pull the whole buck hair out of there. So it kind of stays there and. A little more permanent, if you know what I mean. That is definitely a uh, very good trick, Russ, that you always share. Yeah. So anytime you're using buck, I like to do it. I just got a little piece of olive back there, and I'll put a little flash in here. You can any, you know, anything from voodoo to the regular flashaboo. I'm just doing a little bit of this. I think it's perch. Thank you. Yeah, perch. He drowned perch. I love perch. I used it a lot this fall for steelhead flies. It's a great color. It's got a little red in there compared to that bullfrog. But what I'll do is I'll just lay it in and use about half the amount that I want and then double it up. And that fold will also keep that permanent. I'll just kind of cut it just so it's past that buck hair. In that way, if you notice, it's pretty supported there. That material supported. And that's going to be pretty critical when you're pitching at distance or forcing your cast around trees and et cetera, et cetera. Keep that back on the end there. And what I'll do is I'll take, I'm going to do a two-part bunny on this, similar to a double bunny. I remember the classic double bunny. Yeah. I don't think many people... Remember gluing bunny strips That's together right. to, right. to make That's that right. thing. I mean, this is oh, more to of cast the top that end. Was... Yeah, the top end of it. Oh. And you know, just like some of the other bunny flies I used to do back in the day, the crake in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, I mainly had to do tandem flies for the companies to pick up back then in '99 or whenever it was that that they felt comfortable charging a whopping 495 for. <laughs> so what I'll do here is I'm gonna. Get my support on there. You can see how that buck holds that bunny up there. And I'm going to extend it just beyond my hook there. Just make sure you get your thumb in there and get that. If you're new to tying up. with bunny, what, what Russ is doing here is is kind of exposing the hide. That's You don't Correct. want to mash down on the, the actual hair. It's just yeah, going to look messy. Yeah, and that's messy. what this it's does here gonna... when you're kind of you're just separating it and yeah. making a spot where you can latch that in there. Yep. And again, you could tie this on a great big hook. You can come up with ways to do this tandem version if you want. Uh, this is just a standard version and it's kind of snaky and, and it's meant for the lamprey. Easy to tie, easy to fish and get them done and actually catch a variety of fish. And what I'll do is I'll fold that back, leaving a little, make sure you leave a little bit of ample room here. You'll see how, how, the old school way I used to do it, just to latch it in there. I'm going to take another color, an offset color. Now for the camera and everything, I'm using this light green. But you can, you know, usually I'll use beige or white or cream or et cetera. You can use black, olive, chartreuse, any color of the rainbow. Is there a any sort of rule you follow with that? I mean, yeah, is it usually really, lighter or is it I, darker? Ironically, I mean, you know how they have all those beautiful magnum bunny strips that are all perfect and of great? Course. No, you don't want that. You want the worst one you could ever get. You want like the thinnest pelt where that thing's hooked up today. You want the, th you want the guy that was. Hold it right uh, at the vice there and we'll switch cameras. You, you there want so the you guy can, who wasn't go. cutting straight. You want the guy who was making it super thin. You want it somewhat flexible. You want it just about to break for this particular pattern. So what I'll do is I'll tie an off color piece on the bottom, whether it be white, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Get that white on there, and I'll go about halfway. You could also put, you know, a, a piece of marabou in there if you want it a little thicker. You can do it thinner. There's a million things you can do with this tail also. This is just the simplest way. 
I'm just going to polymer this, whatever way this feather, whatever the material tells you to turn it, that's the way you're going to do it. So if it's leaning one way, you don't want to offset it. Stay with the curvature of that feather and you see, or the material, you see how it's all pushing back? It's exactly the way I want it. So about halfway, I'm going to tie it off. I'm not cutting anything, I'm leaving it. Just going to scoot it out of my way. Take a few strands of rubber. And that's not cross cut, Bunny. No, this is not cross cut. Just, it's just okay. very, very use... thin sliced uh, zonker, actually. Sure. Did you use cross cut for the Kraken? Or just uh, standard? You can't. I just used, at the time, I used the, the old school super thin you know, bunny, the standard zonker. Yeah. 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 Which well, I think, I think there's times where you maybe want it to lay back. You know, it is easy to wrap that. It is. Yeah. But I think maybe the action out of that extra, you know, you know, and it, it, like I said, if you're just some poor river hippie living in a cabin, you know, running a guide trip the next day, you know, you, you tie with the, what you, you do have. it all. You tie with what you got. That's right. You'll eat what we got. We did have a, a question whether you'd consider using a one of those MFC bunny brushes for the body. You can. You can. It would certainly make Support a thin yeah. it would certainly make a thin body because you're yeah. using there's no hide on those brushes. Yeah. There is know, no hide a, on the brushes. So. Or you could spin your own. I mean you could this is just the original pattern, straight meat and potatoes. This is what it was. You got your eyes there and you got your point of reference. And what you can do is you just kind of figure eight. That this is the reason why you use a thin strip here, because if you had a big thick strip, you wouldn't be able to get around those eyes. See that? So you're basically just figurating that thing through those eyes, and then you're taking a few wrap in front. That's awesome. So once you get it to there, and that's basically the point of why you would want to use something that maybe not is your best caliber. Now for this piece, you can for the top part of the mohawk, you can you can do a really nice magnum bunny or whatever. Like I said, you could tie this thing on gigantic hooks too, or tiny hooks, or without lead, or a cone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm sure now there'll be a new fly called this fly with a cone on it. Maybe they'll put red rubber legs on it. Call it a different fly. A northbound, northbound <laughs> <Yeah>. trucker. <laughs> eastbound. Northbound train. Eastbound and down. Eastbound and down. <laughs> so anyway, what train. you do is here to mitigate the <laughs> amount of stuff you're going to be casting, just lift that up like a mohawk and kind of cut it. Try not to cut your rubber legs off. I'll just throw it on Brian's ground there. It's a flat That's top. Perfect. Give it a haircut. Send it to the army. <laughs> Forgot to take bets on that one, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, you did, did uh, You can see where that six X really or that six aught really six. comes in handy. Yeah, you can you can wedge that thing, and this is good. This is the, a mechanical process, so your thumbs come into play, and you could push, you could retch, you can make that thing do whatever you want it to. There's no rules in this stuff. This just means the production. I think the danger here is for someone tying this is. You got to minimize your wraps. Yes. Make every wrap count. Yeah, exactly. You know, maybe, you know, 10 is way too many. I mean, sure. I know looking at that thing, even with six out, it's way too many. Yeah, you don't need much no. with, you know, with you proper really don't. technique, and, you don't need as much. And right? the so, thin thread binds better, too. Yeah, it does. So keep that in mind as well. I'm going to grab a chunk of feather here, you know, some form of feather. This is. A grizzly. It's off of some patch. I'll try to find the best one I can off this sucker before I have to get mad at it. Oh, here's a decent one. Purely cosmetics here, but you can. We've do... only had a few comments on your T-shirt so far. Yeah. And Where you know, let's. I'm. I'm curious if people can guess what what sweatshirt he was wearing when he came in. So Yeah, that's a good one. You take a bet on that one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Whoever gets guesses the T-shirt I was wearing, I'll give them flies that I have here today. Oh man! <laughs> Provide me with your hands. I love it. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna wrap up. I'm just gonna put a heckle on here. Are you still in front of the eyes? Yeah, this is in front of the eye. that around and again you're just following the curve of that thing All right, then we're going to take this mohawk and we're folding it over. And again, you're just exposing that hide. Just exposing that hide. Having the most ideal tie down spot possible Correct. there. Yep. yep. And so as a reminder, this is like Russ's original version of the southbound trucker so yes this is meat and potato circa grassroots <laughs> circa 19 in the late 19s? 1990s the maybe 19s? when we were like Whoa. you know going to see more widespread <laughs> panic shows and stuff yeah, like that that's right i think um even you know though, so even though the artist was from a different you know, yeah anyway. these are not the droids you're looking <laughs> for yeah, that's, that's a good one. i remember that that was good you're oh no where was that one oh phoenix center pontiac yeah <laughs> but uh you know so people are commenting like oh why wouldn't you use this material um, you can use whatever use you want lot loop right you know, so this is this is grassroots you yep. can do whatever you want i i got several versions even here like i said some of them i'll put marabou off the back some of them i won't it really just depends on how thin you want your fly so if you got lower water if you want to bulk it up all you got to do is add a little bit of marabou like i did on that one you know and i'll do a feather version next just to show the difference but this is straight og beginner i mean meat and potato first chestnut fly i had first one i used a lot i'll just send those legs out and what i'll do here is i'm not going to finish off that or I don't nothing rem- i don't remember the originals having legs yeah they did actually did they? the well the one i had to send well some of the ones that i had to send in could because we were limited to the amount of materials right because remember, every one of those materials somebody in Bangladesh had to produce. You know. Yep. So it was big, big deal to <laughs> big deal for those companies. What? You want you're gonna add materials? that on there? <laughs> <laughs> now you're no, now your twenty two dollar fly is no problem. Right. All right. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm just leaving this sucker the way it is. I'm cutting it right there. I'm leaving that stem. Never, never spent time finishing those off. I like that Always because it gives it you so much more rip <laughs> yeah. for that bunny strip. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, really. how many oh, times you have you trimmed something If you don't close. have that there, you ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, you, you know, you just do that. That's a, a nice thin one there. And uh, So, other, Rose, how do you fish this fly? Well, I mean, nowadays with the water being so thin i'm running (laughs) different kind of lines really and maybe i would consider at some point this spring if we don't get any rain or you know maybe doing it with chain instead of lead maybe running an intermediate versus a full sink maybe doing uh, a titan type 3 tip versus a cold 25 and, and the sa lines so it really you know, that's a whole nother thing altogether is the way the lines have come into play when it comes to just straight up streamer fishing. Absolutely. And the benefit that they have. There really is no one streamer line anymore. There used to be. There used to be before the whole global cooling. But now there's not. You got to have, you know, our conditions vary so much now. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a different, it's a different planet. So, yep. And you need to adjust. And thankfully, some of these fly companies are, like SA and some of the other ones. You know, you're building better lines for, for more diverse conditions, period. 
Yeah. And when, you know, when guys grab a pole now, it's not just the old seven weight and the 200 anymore. It's okay. Now how many spools you got for that reel? Right. <laughs> that kind of yeah. thing. So, you know, that comes into play too. And your flies, if you're a fly tire, you can easily adapt flies like the southbound trucker to meet whatever conditions you run into. You know, if you do have spawning lampreys and it's 47 degree water and it happens to be low and there happens to be the end of winter now is March 1st instead of right, April instead, 20th, yeah. you know, and the water's already gone. So you have no water. You can put some chains on there. You can put a couple strips of lead on the both sides of the hook. There's a million different ways to weight this fly. And that's, you know, that's the versatility of just having a guide flyer, you know, somebody who's out there fishing versus somebody who's trying to fly in a garage somewhere. And that's something I, I mean, I really try and drive home with people is pick a pattern you like and tie it not only in different colors, but vary the weight. I mean, it's and sizes. Uh, yeah. Sizes. Yeah. Weights, sizes, the weight, you know, of line. you don't, you don't have to have, you know, a hundred different individual patterns, right. you know, pick a few core patterns you really believe in and just, go to town on the variations because that's, I think that's a more useful tool. I would agree with that. And, and this so. is a stripped fly typically. Yeah. This not is an animated fly, animated. not a swung fly. Yep. Don't swing it. You know, I barely ever drop anchor ever. I don't, I mean, I kind of have one for legal use, but that's about it. <laughs> Weren't you, didn't you put a bunch of stickers out there about no anchors? No, yeah. that was a hashtag. That's, that's right. Hashtag. Oh, I'm sorry. Hashtag yeah. no anchor. Anchors belong in the boat. And then I realized that you have to have one. Legally, yeah. So I got, you know, tornado anchors makes a really nice 15 pounder that does absolutely nothing. And you don't really have to give it a boat ride. But it does help you if you slide off the side and, you know, take The only a nice thing with those with tornadoes it. now with the, the Didymo in the upper, we're going to have to bleach those out every night. <laughs> oh, yeah. The bleach thing. Right. Now yep. we got the Didymo and we got the New Zealand mud slingers and we got the, you know, <laughs> Who knows? We did have a, a good question from Brad about um, new materials are coming out faster than they ever have. I mean, it's kind of it's tough for tires sometimes to, to keep up with all that. And that's why Here's there's so many new just patterns. Tail here. Um, nice. But his question was, are with all these new materials, how do you find older patterns staying relevant? Oh, gosh, they still crush. And you got to think about it. Who has one? Who's running it? Right. Who has it in their box? You know, and that's that's something that I think about constantly because I know that there's 20 of my flies fishing right behind me sometimes. So if I do something different, if I'm a if I'm better at my weighting system, if I'm better with the clarity of the water in terms of my color selection, if I'm better with the type of line I'm fishing, all these are advantages and they're really one of the last advantages people have in fishing is tying a fly. And it's an under, it's an underutilized thing. You can't no, just go to a yeah. bin nowadays and run the same streamer and have it be effective in certain areas of the world now, because you know that twenty other dudes had the same fly. When that fish's eyes get as big as a saucer, you know it made you. You shot a arrow over that buck. Yeah. He's not going to be as you know. He's not going to turn into a village idiot. He wants to live. So you got to come up with a better fly. I rarely even fly, fish the same fly twice. I mean, I, Matt knows that. Yeah, I, I just don't. I I've, don't. I've like collected fishing. plenty of those that Russ has discarded. Yeah, I just don't. I mean, <laughs> luckily I, for me, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> that's what the dashboard is for, right? Yeah, that's it's, what the dashboard is for. Right. That's what the customer is for. They get out of the boat. Here you go. You're never going to use those again. You know, we right. did get a question from Dave about a dubbing. Well, actually, we had a few questions about using a dubbing loop and. I'll go ahead and answer that. Absolutely, oh, it's yeah. it's a it's a greater time yeah. investment, but you end up you can end up with a kind of a lower profile mm -hmm. body and maybe a fly that doesn't hold quite as much water because yeah. that hide isn't. There. I mean, any so. any way you want to adapt these flies is a good method. There's no right or wrong in this stuff. Right. This is creating a weapon. And if you think the weapon needs to be created with a dubbing loop, then go ahead. You know, this is just a platform for you guys to build off of. It's a you foundation put a, fly. Put a cone on it. Put a, you know, tie a feather off it. Tie a double thing off of it. Make the thing with a synthetic material like a Senyo Aquavale or whatever. I mean, you can do whatever you want with this fly. It's, it's, a, it's a platform. Like all, most of my flies are, so. Good. You want to tie up one more? Yeah, I'll crank out a feather version. All right. Just can see it. 
How many hooks are in that pack there? That's that's a big pack. So there, there's not many left. Oh. <laughs> A-Rex, one hot. You know, it's about all I got now. And by the way, we'll I will it's funny when, when Russ sent me the materials list, he was he was pretty busy ice fishing. So it was a little bit uh there was some translation required. I said <laughs> spell check. Spell check this. Spell check. So spell check. I will I will make sure Russ gives us a good materials we list for everyone list. before he leaves. And we'll put that up, of course, for oh, you yeah, as because well. Because I have so. some kind of eye, some, rubber, yeah. rubber leg of type. Speed, eye, the hook is usually what, <laughs> sure. what's listed. Can or can not use. <laughs> Optional Rabbit. if Deer. you want to. Bucktail. Kind of buck hair. depends what you have. <laughs> buck hair. Yeah, buck hair. <laughs> That's a classic. Like, okay, so is that body it's buck hair. hair? It's buck hair. <laughs> it's buck hair. Do you know what buck hair is? <laughs> this stuff comes off a deer's ass. <laughs> You know, always buck hair. entertaining. Everybody uses buck hair. This might have more <laughs> usable clips than any any live event we've done with Russ. I think so. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna put this eye. I'm gonna put an eye on here. So oh I can man, locate one. I guess I'll do red. It seems to be here. Start up at the front again. It's basically going to be very very similar. Give yourself a little bit of room for the front, so you, you don't. What, like an eye length, you think? There, that's yeah, kind of what I do. I actually use the uh, the actual lead eye, kind of. Sure, that's a, a great. I mean, anything or, you can use to stay consistent, yeah, you know. You know for, and, and that's really it. It's you don't want to get you know if you think you're going to get bunched up in here, if you're doing this fold over bunny business, give yourself more space versus less is usually the rule. But don't put the thing out here in the middle. Keep it at the top third if you can. Make it a goal. You know, every day I'm going to get a little closer to that eyelid. I'm going to guess that you do, you do not tie your flies in a a uh, which, what do you call it uh, uh, assembly line style. Oh goodness or, gracious! I never do the same fly twice. I know. I mean, rarely. <laughs> and no, I don't do assembly. And here lines. I am tying. I'll I'll do. Six eyes, you know, to start six tails. All, no, I mean, I gotta it's have all consistent. Some inspiration. Like I got to like look at my total disaster <laughs> at my house and say, oh, that's the one. And you're like, what? You can't even see the wood down there. The <laughs> table's so thick with stuff. It's almost like picking a puppy. Just let it come to you. Yeah, that's right. You just let <laughs> oh, it come. That's right. Whatever's on top of the pile. <laughs> that's the kind of analogy we need in fly time. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't try. Let the puppy come to you. Let the puppy come to you. It'll be a great relationship with you That's and right. your fly. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm going to put a stiffening agent back here. And in this case, it's used to, to support some flash. I'm going to put a, I'll do a feather one here. And again, I'll lift that up, throw a couple locks in there. Throw a little voodoo in this one. Voodoo child. Kind of like your shirt. No. Yeah. It's the little wing. The little wing. Those the MFC centipede legs there? Or? No, there it's a voodoo. Oh, is it fiber. a fiber? Oh. But you can use just about any barred legs you can find at your local you fly can, shop. Yeah, you can use anything. I mean, I, I was using, the, you know, any material that adds a little accent or you like. And, you know, there's no rule. Shorten it up a touch. No rules, just right. Some feathers. I usually use four of them because after a few fish, you lose a few. This gives you a little bit of extra... Pretty close. That's not bad. It was pretty quick work. Just kidding. I picked them out before. <laughs> so I'm going to latch that on there. And that buck does the same thing roughly as, you know, when it was supporting that. <clears throat> I 
Now, are you worrying about lining those up or anything, or just how they go? Yeah, I mean, I kind of pair them up usually mm-hmm. to some degree. See how the other side looks. Yeah, it's fine. Close enough. Close enough for the guy who puts it in the tree on the first cast. <laughs> Are you like uh, Are you like Alex? If the if your customer puts his fly in the fly in the tree, that you just roll him out at that point? Is Ignorance that... shouldn't be rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> you just throw. He's a definitely hat. told me, "Here's your one fly." You know, yeah. like that's what it's you get always a one fly. It's a one fly tournament. It's always <laughs> <laughs> when you blew that last fly, you're done. It's over for you. Any rate, so here I'm gonna I'm gonna make a collar around this this these feathers. So I'm going to tie a little bit on the bottom there. So I've always thought like Russ's approach, you know, from from watching him tie as a youngster all the way up to, to now is always like watching a, a fine chef in the kitchen, right? Russ can take a pile of like whatever materials there are in front of him. He'd be like the perfect iron fly designer, right? You like iron chef. Oh yeah. You know, like, I know so, what you're talking about, you yeah. know, here's your, here's a bag of random is, stuff. Like, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of food you, you have in your house. $10 in a Walmart. Right? Like, <laughs> Go cook Russ, something. Russ could make, like, you know, you know, he's the equivalent of, like, the chef just walking into your kitchen and making a gourmet meal out of, you know, what you have in your cabinet. And, and you know, that's the beauty of, of, you know, Russ's approach to fly tying is, you know, it's whatever materials that you have. You know, you don't have to have this, oh, you got to get the dough and heat, um, you know, hair to spin on this because of of this diameter, right? If it doesn't come from this particular farm, I ain't using it. Right. No. Well, it's like the, no. uh, if it's, you it's don't from, chew big from, red, you know what it uh, is, then <laughs> it's like from sitting in that trailer and then you're like six day of beans and weenies right. and you're like, Oh man, all I got is olive. That's <laughs> exactly. What yeah. That's, that's about that. That's what, that's what it is. Like, oh, we haven't been to the grocery store because yeah, we don't have money. <laughs> you know. You know. But that's that. I think that's always been Russ's approach to tying these flies. Oh, we did have a question, Russ. Uh, when is your fly tying book coming out? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared. I think the I'm not sure the the world's ready for it yet. <laughs> I don't know if a book could appropriate. Uh, you know, realistically capture Russ. All right. You know, so he needs we got more. Here is, this is important. Be <laughs> I'm quiet sorry, I'm talking over there. <laughs> Don't talk over him. So here you go. You got this, this part right here, but yeah, to get to the book thing. Yeah. Probably at some point I'll do something, but it has to be somewhat comedy because otherwise fly time is not that much fun. So just make sure you have a little bit back here and a little bit in front. You want to have ample, better to have a little bit more than less. For this step here. What I'll do is I'll just leave a little tough up there. Clean up that work a little bit. So you got a little bit of work there. Flip that up. Green piece. Mm. Matt, I'm going to have to use white. Sorry, buddy. We'll survive. I'm not worried. I set the ISO low. We should be able to. Get <laughs> I just can't do it mentally. You guys are geeks. <laughs> I can't do it mentally. I have to do cream of some sort. Again, this is going to go with like the belly of the fly. You know, it's always a lighter color. And it's more of my tones to like match the bottom as I usually do in most of my streamer fishing period ever. So I have this like natural tendency to try to make things that match, you know, somewhat naturalistic in terms of matching. 
what I'll do here is I'll wrap that very, very thinly sliced bunny to about halfway and I'll throw some leg in there again. Basically the same exact construction process, except for I, the, there's more of a deceiver style to the rear of this fly, if that helps. Those are the chrome silly legs, if anyone's, yeah, if anyone's they're awesome. wondering. They I do like wonderful. the chrome, and they do pop, too. They really, really pop. We did, uh, did, did Russ get a chance to talk about his vice? We did oh, have yeah. a question about that. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. All right. I'll, I'll talk about it. We're good. I mean, basically, what we're doing is we're just finishing up this here. We're just wrapping forward. Cotterelli, and it's a magic head on here, which is awesome. This thing's really, really cool. It's very, very easy. It, it adjusts to any hook, like basically all automatically. And again, this is where that thin bunny comes into play. I really like the idea of uh, trimming that bunny on the top. I've tied. Oh yeah, well, I mean, basically, you're half like the this. you're yeah. half the mass. Yeah, you know, and that's like I said, it all comes down to fishing. So, you know, if this is going to get my guy to pay attention to twenty more casts because he's not as fatigued, I'm going to do it. And and I'd recommend that even the double ones, you cut that top off because you can do this fly double. You just do a two exactly the same process twice without tie the tail for first and then do the front portion. So you can do this, you know, twice. Do a tandem version of it. I have many, many times in the past. Although I don't necessarily need it for a lamprey fly. But the feathers do add a really good dimension to it. Would you use that same hook if you were doing a double? double them up or? i would if i were i would do you know typically when i'm doing the tandems i'll go the bigger hook in front little smaller one in the back so this process has got to be airtight when you're you know and you're practicing it but you i still do the exact same method but it would be more like this style where it's a little bit thinner off the back you know versus here's one with a bunny here's going to be a similar one to the one i'm doing today but again, and now here, I usually just take the rubber legs, snap them, get a hackle. going to be sad to let it go when too bad somebody it's gotta go with me sweatshirt <laughs> i've take pictures of it then we can maybe yeah, we give we away to, to the everybody has to vote no on one's guessed anything nobody's yet. guessed it it has something to do with i don't know if we fishing. can handle we can, we can throw out some clues it has something to do with ice fishing i don't know if i can handle the volume of comments coming through <laughs> <laughs> you can handle it Ryan. you can handle it matt you got this all right, so I'm going to latch this again, just doing the same thing over there. I'm just going to put another feather up in there. Manhandle that sucker around a little bit. Collar it out. And again, I'm, I'm just going whatever the feather tells me to go. And right now, it's saying go this way. And collaring it back. Speak to me, feather. Talk to me. Talk to me, Goose. Talk to me, You gotta get that last wrap in there. You just gotta. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta. 
When you got the confidence, you don't need your scissor on that last thing. That's right. Rip it. Here, rip it. Yeah, it looks good. All right. There we go. Separate that out a little bit. You can fold that over again just like I did on that bunny version, straight bunny version. Just get yourself a nice pad to, to tie it off there. Russ, we had a question. Is this the same fly as the lunch money? I don't know. What it's the lunch it's money actually, is. it's not because uh, actually it was, this was created before. And the lunch money has laser dub head and is tied inverted All right. on a B10S, right. which heard. is I was, I should have ridiculous that I know it. that, but uh, also a great smallmouth fly. Um, I actually fly. Do not tie that inverted though, because I would say that just the lunch money was probably uh, copied after after this one for sure. Oh, I mean, it's the platform, right? Platform. I, I won't say it was copied directly, right. but there's a lot of parallel thinking out there. Yes, it is. That's you yeah. know, that's what it is. If somebody has some similar concept, and all of a sudden, eight years later, you have a new material, and you know, put something else on there. I don't know. I don't. I don't have the ego to do the the fly tying thing. Oh goodness gracious! <laughs> you know, that's why seriously. I tied like three ever and had them done. Right. And look where it got. <laughs> right. You're welcome, everybody out there. <laughs> so few. So how fast they forget. Tandem fly. Something about that circus peanut. Right. So that was another to, platform. You had to fly. sell that fly to a company to actually put two hooks together. Right. They didn't want to know. do it. Nobody who, who wanted, wanted to do, to do it. Who wanted to do that? Who, who would ever do that? I, I don't know who who got him to actually do it, but I'd like to shake that guy's hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, here's that finished product. <laughs> Just the feather version. I have a few other ones, a couple other examples, but there we are. There you are. That's fantastic, Russ. Well, always fun. And we got people tying along. We got a guy tying a chromatic nut while he was watching this, which is pretty cool. So That's super cool. A little more modern. Yeah. That's a great fly. It's caught me a few fish. I know a guy who tied that one. Right. <laughs> so we Weird. did have a winner on your sweatshirt, Russ. Provide. First person that guessed, First actually. That guessed. Nick Sage, of course. Nick Sage. Oh, Jeez. Think, I know. Jeez. It's too easy. I don't, too think. E I don't he know if that's likes, fair. He likes the flies. And, you know, <laughs> he, knew, he probably talked to me today. Yeah, he, he probably, if it had to do with ice fishing, he's probably seen you in that sweatshirt. He could have. Could have <laughs> very well. But, you know, bet's a bet. Deal's a deal. Deal's a deal. I get him at least for a week, though, to take pictures and then, uh, <laughs> then, uh, I'll get Nick's info and so Russ, we'll I have go a, from there. We had a good question here um, because you are really, in it, you know, a very innovative streamer tire um, when it comes to everything. Are there tires that really inspire you? I mean, a lot of, I mean, definitely Popovics. Definitely, you know, when I was a kid, I was reading all the Lefty Cray stuff and we were looking at saltwater fly fishing and Dan Blanton was pretty bad to the bone back in the day. And, you know, Whitlock has always been one of my favorite tires. And mainly because some of these guys were, do, they were doing things that nobody else was doing back then. You know, these guys were going out there fishing a couple hundred pound tarpon on the, the fiber pole in a Fenwick, you know, Fenwick and a Fluger for crying out loud. You know, we take all that stuff for granted now with all the super whistle, whatever we got for the newest year possible and the highest moduli, graphite, et cetera, et cetera, and the best fly lines, these guys were doing it with nothing. You know, I like a lot of Atlantic salmon flies. I've always, you know, kind of turned my crank. And I like the fishing. I like the method. And I like the mental, you know, fortitude it takes to do some of that fishing, you know, over and over again with the, you know, straight grease line and, and putting in your time. And I, I just admire those guys and the flies that they created back then. Because nobody was doing that stuff. Nobody was, 
you know, guys like Sadati, you know, people that have created great bait fish flies for fish that, you know, were, were really on, you know, a lot of it was unheard of back then. So, Stew ape, et cetera, et cetera. The list is pretty long, actually. So a lot of them, a lot of them have been big influences. I mean, Popovics and Blanton have been probably some of my favorites. Sadati, of course, is my buddy and, you know, a lot of those guys. So where do you think, uh, streamer tying's going you know i mean we're seeing like we talked about you know a lot more variable change and and fast change in our rivers and our water conditions and i mean what do you think the next the next thing I mean, is i mean it feels you know, like we're on the smaller trend yeah, we've talked about that just is going say, back. Matt, i mean all this stuff we've been putting at these fish for so many years now ever since basically sadati's like the first person who came out there and just threw a serious check in no, I mean, really serious. Like that fish is gonna run them. That fly is gonna run them into their homes, kind of size. You know, six, eight, ten inch flies on the upper Manistee, kind of stuff. Um, it is going smaller. It's going smaller because the environment, I swear, is shrinking. It seems like the river has got like nothing in it. The pressure is higher than it's ever been. There's more boats. There's more etc. There's more guides. There's more attention to these places. That, you know, I, what I just read something the other day that, like, Michigan sold more fishing licenses to first-time buyers, like, than ever in the history of ever. So we know that those guys are all out there tromping around, spreading that mud snail. But, it, you know, it, it, it's, it is going smaller, Matt. Okay. There's no doubt about it that these fish have pattern recognition and they're getting smarter. And that stuff at night and going out there and... and seeing six, eight, ten guys out there in a random night floating ping pong and back and forth against that Manistee River or Osable River every, you know, launch is full. And these fish are just getting wise to that stuff. Yeah. You know, they just are. So the smaller the size is definitely going to be a trend in the streamer thing. I can't see that, you know, how many 12-point bucks are out there that, you know, are getting shot at by 10, ink, 10 guys a day. You know, it's a, eventually there. Something's got to give, right? And that's that's the way these rivers are. If you only got two hundred big ones in a twenty-five mile stretch, and everybody's shooting at them with the high power rifles, you know, they're, they're pretty soon you're going to have to go out there and get a little bit sneaky on them and run your bow or something. You're going to have to go smaller. Yeah. Oh, good. I mean, we and you know, even more than fly size, we talked a little bit about tactic changes too i mean i i know i've been guilty of just getting in the front of the boat and just running yes. the same exact program rowing the boat the same and yeah, it might be huge. time to start boat tinkering. operation i'll yeah. just go i'll say that if you want to increase your odds at fishing get a guy who can operate a boat because that's like the most critical aspect. I mean, if all things are the same, I mean, if you're considering all things are the same, let's say the angling, casting similar, the boat's movement's the same, and everybody goes to the same bin to grab the same fly, you know, then your advantage isn't the fly, it's the guy rolling. Right. You know, so it's huge. Boat, boat handling, size of the fly, different kinds of line, getting out there and getting outside the box and running some intermediate stuff maybe, running a type three instead of a type six, running a size four instead of a size, you know, two. You know, that's that's what's making the difference. And yep. and times a day. You know, now it's like I I've been moving more fish from noon to two than I ever have. No one's out there. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy, and that's, I mean, these fish are smart. They adapt to those things. Yeah, they do adapt, and, I mean, guys, think about the days that we used to go out and mouse, and we were, like, it was only us. <laughs> we were, like, only us crazy enough to go do that. Oh, no, I've been mousing for years. Right, but, I mean, we'd never seen no, it. No, I'm so just saying, I mean, you know, you get it. But, yeah, no, we really were, camera. there was nobody <laughs> like, out there mousing. Nobody's been mousing for years. <laughs> it was fun. Those were the days. <laughs> I love some film camera mousing pictures, you know. Oh, we got right. these at the CVS. I got doubles. You can have one. And they were always terrible. <laughs> Two ants on a hill with some red eyes. <laughs> it was just like terrible pictures. You could never get a good shot. People did Why fish before try? the internet. Yeah. 
Weird. It's crazy. Did we even catch fish back then? Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> There's no proof. There was no picture. Yeah, you had to like call your buddy down in Nuevo or somewhere to see if there's actually something going on, and they'd tell you if they right. liked you. If they liked you. Yeah, now you just have some guy in Illinois telling you that the hatch is happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap things up for tonight, uh, Rust. Thank you so oh, no much. Problem. Always fun to have you here. Always like always make us laugh there. and just. <laughs> it's always a great time, Ross. And it's so cool. I mean, Traverse area, the Northern Michigan community has some of the best and most innovative tires. It's really cool. If you want to learn more about Russ, I think Instagram's probably his his weapon of choice as of late. At Russ Madden makes it real easy. All it's actually in the link to this video already so you can uh he puts oh, up daily creations and i mean you can see you can follow his ice fishing adventures which is always always entertaining you can see brooke walk straight out of their giant new ice shanty which <laughs> brooke is in the green room chair right off screen here just making faces at us so <laughs> she's a great sport though. <laughs> um let's see uh next week matt Grajewski. We're uh, so looking forward to that. Pretty excited about that. Awesome. We're going to see guys some ought to check that guy speaking out. Speaking of available. platforms, that is a platform guy that you can build some big flies off of. I'm I'm ex- very excited to have him. I've actually been trying to get him for probably at least three or four years. So finally, the bone, I yeah, just I'll keep him bugging him. So <laughs> um, Great guy too. let's see, let's see. Last, uh, just a few few more housekeeping things if you haven't hit the subscribe button you should do that that helps us out a whole bot a bunch like this video uh, people can find this great info from Russ here and if you'd like to support our channel the number one thing you can do is shop local whether it's your local northern angler fly shop at the northern or the the local fly shop down the street so support local shops Absolutely. that's the way to go Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Russ. Stay Anything you have? Thanks, Russ. <laughs> Stay on not, top of the ice. Not arts and crafts. <laughs> <laughs>